All right. And just like that, we are back again with another episode of the Mind the Growth podcast. As always, I am Chris Kinghorn. And I'm Eric Hoffman. Eric, what do we have on the docket today? We got a headache. That's what we got, Chris. What do I mean by that? I mean, I'm traveling to Montana tomorrow and I booked the trip using Chase Points and it was a friggin' nightmare. So you want to hear my story? <laughs> I should. Before we dive into credit card points, should we tell uh, Dave Ramsey to put his earmuffs on or are we good to move forward? <laughs> sure. <laughs> the points guy, Dave Ramsey, whoever else is shilling, shilling this, uh, this type of information. So uh, a little background before I get into the actual story. So I've amassed a pretty decent chunk of chase points. I have about a million points overall, and I've concentrated it into chase for the reason that they have seemed to be the most flexible where you can transfer them to different travel partners and use them for different things versus using like an airline or a hotel branded card where it's more locked into that actual airline or hotel group like a Marriott or American Airlines that sort of thing so I've used it in that way similar to how people use Amex points and that's been the theory for a while Fast forward to 2020 during the pandemic, my wife and I were supposed to go to a wedding in Hawaii in the late part of 2020 that eventually got canceled for obvious reasons. And we had refundable flights and we booked like first class tickets because it was relatively inexpensive at the time. I had requested that those be refunded back in 2020. And I didn't really think anything of it, but a few months ago, I noticed they were never refunded and I still didn't have those points back, which was like around 200,000 points, I think, something around there. So a significant amount. And so I've been calling Chase, the travel line or whatever they, they call it, for like the last three months, every single week. And every time I get on the phone with them, it's clearly a call center somewhere in India or whatever it may be. Not that that's a problem. You know, we use people in the Philippines for our business and they're great. But every single time I get on the phone with them, it's like they have a script in front of them that all they do is first they ask the same information that I've already dialed into the phone, into the automated system, like my social security number, the last four digits, uh, my credit card number. I already dialed that in and that's the first thing they ask, which is the most frustrating thing in the world. What what the hell is the point of di- dialing it in if I have to tell them once someone picks up? And then the second thing, they consistently, repeatedly say they're going to put me on hold for three to five minutes and it lasts usually six or seven, but I don't know what the hell they're doing on the computer during this seven minutes. It makes no sense to me. There was one call I was on that with them for an hour and a half. They put me on three to five minute holds like 15 times. And I got to the point, I'm like, listen, what are you actually doing on this computer? Because it doesn't make any sense to me. There is there's one job you have, it's to refund my points. And if you can't do it, pass me to somebody else who can, because this needs to get handled. So I had like 10 of those calls over the past three months. And finally, two days ago, I got the points refunded. And so that saga is over. But in, in the interim, my wife and I were flying to Montana to visit some friends. And idiotically, I decided to book it through the Chase Travel Center again with points. And it, it ha- luckily hasn't been bad yet. Fingers crossed, everything goes through. But it cost a lot of points because flights are just insane right now. And to change or modify the flight, which we had to do because Delta decided on our flight back that they wanted to add an extra stop with a layover in at Los Angeles for like six hours versus just one stop in Salt Lake City, which is the original plan. So we're like, no, we're not going to do that. And we wanted to change the flight to one day prior that had just the one stop in Salt Lake City, like the original flight that we planned for. And it took like two days worth of calls to get that handled through Chase because you can't do it through Delta. You can only do it through Chase because it was booked through Chase. And it is just a nightmare. So 
that that's my story on the surface. Let's let's dive into what what is wrong with the world and <laughs> how screwed up that travel was, is. That was Eric's therapy session for the yeah. week. So are we are we feeling better? Are we decompressed? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I needed to get so, it off my chest. I have I have managed to become a little bit of a points nerd myself too. So I will my understanding and kind of what has uh, worked for me in the past is transferring the points to an airline. And now keep in mind that there's certain airlines that you can transfer to. So Chase, uh, there's a handful of partners that you can and cannot transfer to. Southwest, for example, you cannot transfer to. But there's also partner and affiliate um, airlines as well too. So for example, if American Airlines, if you're not able to get on a specific flight or if you can't transfer for whatever reason, a lot of the times you can transfer to British Airlines. So and a lot of these other uh, airlines will have significantly higher uh, kind of uh, points transfer or they'll do these promotions where you're able to get a lot more value for your points. So I've actually in the past been able to take a round trip to Europe um, in business class for right, right around 200,000 points. And that's because instead of booking through Chase, you actually are able to, if you transfer them to the appropriate airlines during these specials, you can really take advantage of it. Now, being that we're in the, you know, in the, the era that we are now and travel is so damn expensive as of the last handful of months, and it's probably just going to continue to get more expensive. I don't think they're doing as many promotions, but I've, I've always been able to kind of figure out where I'm going to, what I'm going to do with my points. And I've got, I only have Chase and Amex too. So those are kind of the two that, that I work with. So let's, uh, let's do this in real time. So here, here we go. Here are the travel partners, which are crazy to me. So I don't even know what this is. Aer Lingus, (laughs) some, (laughs) some South American airline, who the hell knows? Air Canada, British Airways, which does have a bonus. Wonderful. Emirates, uh, what is this? Air France, Iberia, Spanish airline, JetBlue, Singapore, Southwest is actually on here. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. Okay. United and Virgin Atlantic Flying Club. I assume mm-hmm. that's just their point system. Then they have uh, International Hotel Group. Is that what IHG is? Sounds about right. And if then not, it is now. Marriott, which is actually offering a decent bonus, 50%. Um, and then Hyatt. So, so because American and British airlines are, are, I don't know what the appropriate term for it, you know, not sister airlines or, but they've got partnerships with the existing within the two. A lot of the times, if you, depending on what hub you're flying into, you can hop on a, on a British airlines flight. And sometimes it's actually facilitated by American airlines. So that's kind of how I look at it. Yeah. So what is frustrating about that to me, and I think Amex, which I am probably planning to switch over to and start concentrating my points there because it seems like they have much more of a robust uh, partner situation than Chase does. They, I mean, Delta's missing first and foremost, which is one of the bigger airlines in the US. American Airlines, which is maybe the biggest in the US, is missing. As well, well and then as, for us in Phoenix too, we exactly. have a we have a ton of Delta options in American, so those are yeah. those are ideal for us. Yeah, so I'm selfish. Yeah, but <laughs> I want I want partners that I could actually use, not not friggin' Aer Lingus. <laughs> I don't care, I don't care about that. So yeah, the the partner groups aren't that great, so it makes it difficult to transfer points into because I don't want to use any of those things and. You know, frankly, I at this point, I'd almost prefer cash back, which maybe I'll switch to a cash back type of card. I don't know. Well, you can also get a, a card that uh, gives you Bitcoin back. I believe there's a handful <laughs> of uh, credit so cards that it, pay you in crypto. It's, it's an interesting segue because I've actually looked into most of them and they're awful. They, I don't know if you've looked at the fine print of some of these cards. They are pure garbage. Like... The there's like, let me see if I can pull one up. It's just so I can speak intelligently about it. Um, Let's see. Do you have a particular one? Does Coinbase Coinbase. have a card? I think so. Coinbase card. Yes, they do. Earn crypto back on every purchase. All right. Let's see the fine details. 
Well, the one thing too, that for, I think people have to keep in mind, you know, what are you spending most of your money on? That's why the, right. the Amex gold card for me is, is ideal. You get, I think, I believe it's four times the points back on food. So eating out as well as travel. Now mm -hmm. you don't get the, the higher point value that you do from the platinum card with the travel. However, the grocery store and the eating out at restaurants, you get the 4% back within points. So that's, I think the gold card's great. It's very similar to the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Yeah, um, which is what I use. Right. Yep. That's I've got that one as well too. But um, you know, I'd love to have a, a an Amex Platinum card because of the Centurion Lounge, but I just can't justify the almost seven hundred dollars a year for it, especially already having the gold card and the the Sapphire Reserve and the Sapphire Preferred. I spend way too much money on credit card fees as is. Yeah. So uh, it looks like they get one to two percent back uh this might be too tricky to do online anyways the from what i've seen most of the crypto credit cards they'll give you like a couple of percentage points back on your spending but they limit it to like 500 dollars total of cryptocurrency mm. across the year or something okay. like ridiculous like that so i mean if you're spending a lot of money that's that's nothing comparatively to just continuing to amass either cash back or points through a traditional right. credit card. So yeah, I, I was super excited about them, but once they started to come out and once the details and the fine print were out, none of them really made any sense. I mean, you could argue that if, if you're going to use one, it's better than nothing, but just use a better credit card and pay for crypto. <laughs> I mean. Well, for, for any of you, uh, any of you, the, 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 geez, wow. We're talking to us here for any of the viewers out there. If you guys are <laughs> using any of these cards, let us know and, uh, let us know what the, what the experience has been thus far. Yeah. So with you said you had the Amex now. Yeah. So I have the gold card. I haven't gone through with doing the platinum card just because I do have the, the Chase Sapphire reserve and I have the Chase Sapphire preferred as well. I think that the benefits to me for, once we start traveling a little bit more, it might make sense to, to get at that point. Um, I still get a lot of points on the gold card for travel. I think you just get one or two more points per dollar on the, on the gold card itself. The Centurion lounge access is, is huge. Um, so I think once we start picking up and doing a little bit more of international travel, then I might, I might get it at that point. Um, I might phase away from the Chase Sapphire Reserve, but the reason why I haven't done that so far is I'm assuming it's probably similar to you. I've got all these points sitting in Chase. And if I want to use those on my preferred card, if I want to utilize kind of two times the points on, on travel through the portal, you can do that through your preferred kind of utilizing kind of that channel. But if you actually go through your reserve, you get three times. So your, your points actually go significantly further. So maintaining and keeping that open. And we also have company cards that we utilize and have uh, the construction company that we we use. Um, everything essentially runs through a handful of different credit cards. So we're amassing points that way. Um, so being able to transfer those into uh, the reserve and utilizing it for travel that way, it, it helps not only us travel more cost effectively, employees, et cetera. So whoever, whoever needs to utilize those points. So that's kind of why we've held on to them. Yeah. More recently, I actually decided to get the Amazon credit card. Are you familiar with that option? No, I'm not. So, I mean, we, we buy a ton of stuff from Amazon, which is probably not a great thing, but either way we do. It's I easy. I feel like convenient. everybody does at yeah. this point. <laughs> yeah. And now that they own Whole Foods, which we shop at regularly, the the credit card now seems like a good value because for both Whole Foods and Amazon, I think it's either a four or five X your purchase that you get back in points for those types of purchases. So for that card, I only use it for Amazon purchases or now that I go to Whole Foods, they have the Whole Foods app where you can scan it and get discounts. And most Whole Foods now you can actually use the virtual credit card through the app. And so I don't even have the physical credit card. I, I don't know if they never sent it to me or if I just lost it. <laughs> Who knows? But I only use it for those two things and I've already gotten a ton of points from it. So those types of cards, I, I do find a good amount of value in. And actually another story, uh, a few years back when we were planning our wedding, there was a, um, what was it called? Uh, the Spark card. I think I remember the Capital One. Capital Spark, One, I yeah. Say. 
-hmm. So Capital One at the time, I was reading like a, I think it was the Points Guy blog or something like that, one of those. And they were talking about the newest credit cards that were coming out and Capital One just released their Spark business card, which they had this crazy promotion for that you could either do their their points version or their cash back vers version for a business card. And so I chose the cash back version because the deal with it was, I think it was that you had to spend like... These are rough numbers, so don't quote me. But I, I want to say it was like $5,000 in the first 30 days of the card and then $50,000 overall in the first six months of the card. So if you did, if you did the 5,000 in the first 30 days, that triggered like a, I want to say like a, a $2,500 credit back to your credit card or something. So a great option. And then if you hit that $50,000 level in the first six months, that was, uh, uh, let me, let me back up. So first 30 days, I'm guessing it was probably a thousand dollars back in, if you hit 50,000 in six months, that was another 4,000. So however you look at it, if you hit both of those triggers, I wound up getting $5,000 cash back just for using the card towards like wedding purchases and wedding planning. And so that was a great little uh, hack that I did for our wedding planning. And then I just canceled the card once we were done. So right. quick okay. $5,000 off <laughs> if you're planning I, a wedding and you see those types of deals. I, uh, I used to know this family that was very particular about points. And this was kind of like in the early days of points. And um, they would open up uh, new credit cards and they would go to... Uh, it, it was a specific grocery store that had a specific type of gift card where you could buy the gift card and then you could use that <laughs> gift card to then pay off your credit card oh my God. and you would, you would get hit with the, with the bonus points. So <laughs> wow, it's, that's, uh, I it's think like it's a, full -time a little job. bit more locked down. Of, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what, what blogs or things are you reading these days? Are you trying to maximize points right now or are you on a hiatus? No, I I, I kind of look at it as I really, I pretty much only use my gold card at this point. I've I've I like having the points on on American Express, mm -hmm. where I'm spending most money is going to be gas, grocery store, um, restaurants. It's a lot of uh, the majority of the cash that that I'm actually spending is is going to, um, and the the gold card works perfect for all those. So once I kind of again once travel picks up a little bit more so on my end, then I think the the platinum might make sense. But it's a lot of it's just going to be the luxury of utilizing that lounge. Unfortunately, right, right. it's an expensive <laughs> card to buy for. Uh, to, and even geez, now, what about those, you? Those lounges aren't aren't that great anymore. They've become overrun. The last time I was in the Amex lounge, which granted was before the pandemic, but for my bachelor party, we, we all went to the Amex lounge, which just opened, I think it was like early 2020 and it was mobbed. There was like so many people there. The food options weren't that great. So it was nothing special. Amex, step up your game. But other than the that- The one in San Francisco is pretty good. So really? Okay. I don't know if and when I'm ever going to San Francisco again, but uh, I'll have to check it out if I wind up there. In terms of review, I'm more on a hiatus. The The only other one that I considered recently was the Amazon card. So maybe after all of my frustration with Chase, maybe I'll do an Amex for personal because I have the platinum for business, but maybe I'll do one for personal just to shift away. We'll see. Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't decided how pissed off I am yet, but <laughs> we'll, I would get we'll a gold card. Soon. Yeah. I would, I would just, I would get a gold card. And if you already have the platinum where you can get access to certain lounges through the business, then, then do that in my head, that gives you access to, to all the best cards. All right. Perfect. Well, leave, leave your comments below, like, and subscribe. Tell us what cards you're using and why, and what cards I should be using and why, and tell uh, Chase how bad their customer service is. Tweet them, send <laughs> messages to random Chase emails, do whatever you can to get them to change their ways. And full disclosure, this is coming from Eric Hoffman, not Chris Kinghorn. <laughs> Chris Kinghorn endorses this message. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Catch you later. Oh, man. Sounds good. Bye.